Today I'm going to show you how you can create a lead gen automation with Google Maps and lead enrichment with Firecrawl. This workflow makes it possible to not only automatically get leads, but also enrich those leads with Firecrawl to get all the relevant emails and social accounts. First, I'm going to start with a quick demonstration and then I'm going to show you how you can create this workflow for yourself. Okay, so right now we are in NetN and this is the workflow that we are going to be using for today. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to have the correct query to be able to start this workflow. So therefore, I'm not I'm going to go to google sheets okay right now we are in the google sheets and here we have the following query so the first thing is we have a keyword so this is the restaurant keyword and i want to have a location and for this we have chosen the location new york okay so now we can start the workflow and then we can see what the result is but first it's going to get the query then it's going to start the scraping job then it's going to check the status of the scraping job right here after that it's going to get the results and it's going to save our data and here we're going to enrich the leads that we have gotten from our scraping job and then here we're going to put our results in the google sheets and then here we update the row to say that the leads have been enriched okay so right now this workflow is done with running and let's go to the google sheet to see what the result is of this lead generation workflow right now i'm in the google sheet and here we can see we have three different sheets the first sheet was the query that is what we discussed before we started the workflow here we have the data and then we have the details and the data is the result that we have gotten from our scraping from google maps so this is just the raw data that we have gotten and here we can see we have the keyword then we have the name of the business the category of the business here we have the address of the business the phone number website and here is the status if we have used lead enrichment or not here you can see all of the results that we have gotten so we have started one scraping job and one scraping job results in around 100 different results and in the next sheet the details sheet we can see what the result is of our lead enrichment so that's what we have right here so here we have the link of the website here we have the emails of the company so right here then we have the LinkedIn account, the Facebook account, the Instagram account, and the Twitter account. So as you can see, we get the most important emails of the company and all the different social media accounts so that we can use our cold DM or our cold email to send them our offers. And right here, you can see all the results we have gotten from this lead enrichment. Okay, so now that you know what the result of this video will be, we will now start with making this workflow. But before we go further, this workflow will also be downloadable in our free school. And I will leave a link in the description below where you can download it. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a scheduled trigger to our workflow. And I want this workflow to run fully automatically. So the only thing that I have to add are the queries and the locations for our lead gen. And then this workflow will run automatically. So that is why I have chosen for a scheduled trigger. And in the scheduled trigger, I have the trigger interval on minutes and then 30 minutes. But you can choose any other interval that you would like. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a Google Sheets note. And here's where we're going to get our query. So for this, the first thing that you need to do is you need to add your Google Sheets account. And the resource is Sheets within Document. The operation is Get Rows. Document is the Firecrawl Legion. So this is the document that I have used for this workflow. And then the sheet is the query sheet. And then we also need to use filters. And then the column is status. And then the status column needs to be empty. So I will now quickly show you how you need to set up this sheet. Okay, so as you can see right here, in the query sheet, we have three different columns. So here we have the keyword, then we have the location, and then here we have the status. So the status column is very important because when we run this workflow automatically, it will check if the status is empty or if it has been used. And right now we have run this keyword, so now the status is unused. But if we set another query and the location, and then the status is empty, then it will use that row to do its lead gen. So this is how we make this workflow fully automatic. And then here, you just need to add these three columns and then this sheet is fully set up and the next thing that we need to do is we need to add an http node and here we start our google Maps scraping job and we are going to do this scraping with the use of appify so before we get started with setting up this http node i will first show you how you can create a free appify account so what you need to do is you go to this website right here and then you create your free account and then you log in. After you have logged in, you will land on this page right here. So here I have my Google Maps scraper that we are using for this video, but here you won't have anything. So what you need to do is you need to go to the Appify store and then right here you need to type in Google Maps. And then the first thing that you will see is the thing that we need and that is the Google Maps scraper. So just select that and this one is what we are going to use for today. In here you can see that the method is a post and then we need our URL. So I will now show you how you can get this URL. So what you need to do is you need to go to integrations, then scroll down below and click on this right here. 
and then go to run actor synchronously and get data set item. And here you can see we need to set it on a post and here we have our link. So we need to copy this link and then post that in our NDN. In here you paste the link right here and then we need to put our API key at the end of this link for authorization. So I will now show you how you can find your API key in Epify. To find your API key, you need to go to the settings and then you need to go to API integrations and then right here you can find your API key. So you just need to copy this right here and then go to your NADN. And then finally, you need to paste your API key at the end of this URL. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to send some headers and then some header parameters. So the name is the content type and then the value is application slash JSON. Then the name is accept and then the value is application slash JSON. We also need to send a body and then the body content type is JSON and then specific body is using JSON. So right here we have the script that we're going to actually use to start our scraping job. So here we have our query. So this is our keyword and in this case it is restaurant. And then here we have our location query. And in this case, this is New York. Then here we have our max crawled places per search. And this is the amount of search jobs that you're gonna start. So remember one search job gets you 100 links. So the more search jobs you start, the more expensive it gets. And then here we have our language, this is English. And then the maximum leads enrichment records and the max images you just set to zero. And this is the only thing that you need to do to be able to start scraping from Google Maps and get the data. So here you can see our result. This is the output that we get if you've done everything correct. And next we have a loop over items node. And this is very important because we have just started a scraping job. And now we need to check the status of the scraping job if it's already finished or not. But one important thing is, is the check scraping status node can only handle 30 scraping jobs at one time. So if I say I want 40 scraping jobs, then it won't work. So we need to batch that and that's why I use a loop over items node. So in here you can see I have a max batch size of 25. So we never run into that issue. Then right here we have a secondary loop inside this loop. So what this loop will do is this will check if the scraping job is already finished or not. And if it's not finished, then it will go through the loop and then it will wait a couple of seconds and then check again until the job is finished. So in here we have a wait node and then you can see that the wait amount is five seconds. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to add an HTTP node where we're going to actually check our scraping status. Okay, so in here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set the method to get. Then our URL is https slash api.appify.com slash v2 slash actor runs and then the data ID from our Excel scraping job. So each scraping job gets its own ID and that's what we track right here to see if the status is succeeded or not. Then we need to add an authentication that is a generic credential type and then the generic auth type is query auth. Then our query auth account right here, that is what we need to create. So I've already created one, but here you can click on create new credential. And then right here, what we need to do is we need to say authorization right here. And here you need to add your Appify API key. And that is all that you need to do for this query auth. Then we also need to send query parameters. And then here you have the name is token. And then the value is once again your API key. Then we also need to send some headers. And then the header parameters is the same as before. And that is content type. And then the value is application slash JSON. Then the name is accept. And then the value is application slash JSON again. And that is all that we need to do to check the scraping status. And right here in the output, you can see that we get here, the status is succeeded. So this one has succeeded, of course. But if it's not succeeded, then you will see a different text right here. And right here, we have an if node that will check if it has succeeded or not. So in here, we use this status in here. And if it's not equal to succeeded, then it will go to the true branch. So if it is false, then it will go to the true branch. And then it will wait a couple of seconds and check again. If it is equal to succeeded, then it will go to the false branch. And then our loop is done. So then you can see it will go to the false branch. And then it will go back to the loop over items. And then it will go to the next scraping job. Okay, so now that we know that our scraping job has been successful, now we need to actually get our results. And that is what we're going to do in the next node. So right here, we're going to get our results so that we can actually store them and use them. In this node, we have to do the following. So the method right here is a get. And then the URL is an HTTP api.appify.com slash v2 slash data sets. And then right here, we have our data ID and then slash items. So every scraping job has its own ID. And that is what we need to use right here to be able to retrieve our results. Then the authentication is a generic credential type. And then the generic auth type is query auth. And then right here, we have our query auth account. And this is what we already have set up. So now you don't have to do 
anything. Next, we do need to send query parameters and then the query parameters itself is the name is token and then the value is the API key. We also need to send the headers and then here we have the same header parameters as before. So the name is content type value application slash JSON and then for the name once again, accept an application slash json and that is all that we need to do to get our actual results back and right here you can see i get 100 items back and then here we have all the information that we have gotten from this certain business that we have gotten so now that we have gotten our results back we now want to store these results and then later on use them but that's what we do in the next node here we're gonna store our data so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add our google sheet credential then the operation is append row and then the document is the firecrawl lead gen document and then here the sheet is the data sheet we're gonna map each column manually so now i'm going to show you how you need to set up the data sheet here we are in the data sheet and here you can see all of the columns that we need so the column that we need is we need the query string the title the category name the address the phone website and the status and the status column right here is also very important because what this will do is this will say if we have already used it for lead enrichment or not so it is false if we haven't used it for lead enrichment yet and it is true if we have used it so now that you've set this up correctly you will see all of the different columns right here so the search string is all the way at the bottom so we go to right here and here you can find your search string that is right here then for the title we need to go back up the title is right here then we have our category name that is right here the address then for the phone number we have this one right here and the website is above that and then finally we need to add the status and in the beginning we have not used it for lead enrichment so the status right here is false and here you can see the output how we have stored this data so we only store the important data and the rest of the data that we don't need we just don't use next we have a filter node and this filter node is very important because what this will do is this will filter out all of the results for the businesses that do not have a website so for the lead enrichment the business does need to have a website so it can crawl that website and get all of the important data from the website but if it does not have a website then we cannot do that and then it's not useful for us so that's why we do the filter right here in this filter we have two conditions the first condition is json.website is not empty so it has a website and the second condition is that the status is equal to false so this means that we have not used it for lead enrichment yet so this is very important and here you can see that we have discarded five items and kept the rest of the items so now we have arrived in the last loop of this workflow and this is where we're going to do our lead enrichment and the way we are going to do our lead enrichment is by an app called firecrawl so what firecrawl is firecrawl is a website scraper that can easily scrape all the data from websites and firecrawl has a free account where you can use 500 different crawls for free so before we go further with setting up this loop i will first show you how you can get your free firecrawl account right now we are on the firecrawl website and what you need to do is you just need to make a free account and go to your dashboard so after you've logged in you will end on this page right here and it is very easy to get your firecrawl api because on the dashboard page you can easily see your api key right here so we're just going to copy this and then we can go back to our nn and start scraping so first you need to add your loop over items node and then the batch is one then the next node what we are going to do is we need to add an http node and this is where we're going to scrape the website content in here the method is a post and then the url is https slash slash api.firecrawl.dev slash v1 slash scrape then the authentication is a generic credential type then the generic auth type is bearer auth and here we need to create our account so here you need to click create new credential and then you will see this and what you just need to do is you just need to paste your firecrawl api right here and this is a bearer auth account and this is very useful because normally you will need to type bearer and then a space and then your api key but because this is a bearer auth account that is already done for us and now we just need to paste in our api key and then we are fully set up so next we need to send a body so we can actually send the data that we want scraped so here we have our small script this is just the website url that we want scraped and then the format is an html and this is the format of the website and this is how all the websites are normally structured so this is the only thing that we need to do to be able to scrape all of the different websites after we have scraped the website we get a lot of data but also data that we actually don't need and that is why we use the code node right here to be able to extract all of the data that we actually want so that we can store that and use that later for our marketing purposes. So as you can see, we have a lot of data right here and this is the data that we are gonna actually store. So I have made a script that filters all of the data and only keeps the most important data that we actually want to have. 
So what the output will be is we get the website, the emails, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, if these are on the website. So I would just show you the script right here. But this script will also be downloadable on our free school. So you don't have to make this for yourself, but I will just scroll through it pretty slowly. So right here we have our script that we're gonna use to extract all of the important information. And that is all that we need to do for this code node. Next, we're gonna actually save the data that we have just gotten. And that's what we do in this Google Sheets node. So first, again, connect with your Google Sheets account. Then the operation is append row. And the document is the fire crawl lead gen. And then the sheet is details. And then mapping column mode is map each column manually. And I'm gonna show you how to set up the last sheet for this fire crawl lead gen. So in here, we need to have the following columns. So first, we need to have the website, then we have the emails, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And this is the most important information that we want to get from each company. If you have done this correctly, you can just easily select all of these nodes right here and just map them to the correct column. That's all that you need to do for this node. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to mark this row as processed. So before we had a column that was called status and that was false, so we did not use the lead enrichment. But now we need to set the status to true because we have used it for lead enrichment. And that's what we do in this node. First, connect with your credential, then operations up date row then the document is firecrawl lead gen and then the sheet is data and then right here the column to match on is the website because we need to match on the correct column that is very important and then the values to update is the website and then the status needs to be set to true and that is the only thing that you need to do in this note finally after the loops over items note we need to update our query status so in the beginning we had our query and then the status if it was empty then we would use it in our lead gen workflow and if it was already used then it will skip that row and then we'll go to the next row to be able to run this workflow. But now that we have used it for our lead gen, we now need to update it and say that we have used it. That's what we do in this final node. So it is just the same as before and then the sheet, it needs to be query. And then here we need to match it on the row number and then it is json.row number. And then the state that needs to be set to you so that we know that it needs to go to the next row and get that query. So now this workflow is completely finished. You are now able to generate leads with Google Maps and enrich those leads by using Firecrawl. And this is all that I have for you today. I hope you found this video useful. And if you find it useful, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to our channel.